Pete Buttigieg has a little bit of explaining to do about a number of topics. One we're gonna focus on today involves his work for McKinsey. This is a global consultancy firm with annual revenues of over $10 billion. He worked there from 2007 to 2010, but that's as much detail as I can give you about his time there because we don't know and he's not talking. Now, why is this a concern? I mean, everybody who runs for president has worked a few places. He's worked at fewer because he's 23 years old, but <laughs> um, McKinsey has has done a number of questionable things. And even recently, when it comes to their work for the federal government having to do with ICE, uh, doesn't look great. So McKinsey proposed cuts in spending on food for migrants, as well as on medical care and supervision of detainees. McKinsey's team also looked for ways to accelerate the deportation process, provoking worries among some ICE staff members that the recommendations risk short circuiting due process protections for migrants fighting removal from the US. Let's pause there for one second. Their recommendations were so extreme that ICE's staff members were like, are we being mean to these migrants? <laughs> so let's just note that. Now going forward, the consultants, three people who worked on the project said, seemed focused solely on cutting costs and speeding up deportations, activities whose success can be measured in numbers with little acknowledgement that these policies affected thousands of human beings. In what one former official described as heated meetings with these consultants, agency staff members questioned whether saving pennies on food and medical care for detainees justified the potential human cost. So, so clearly there were people in those meetings doing the right thing, they just weren't working for McKinsey. You know Office Space, mm -hmm. the Office Space. Yep. You know the Bobs. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. McKinsey. They're the Bobs. They're the Bobs. Yeah. yeah. Now this is outside of Buttigieg's time. There, we don't know that he ever worked on any uh, issue relating to immigration or anything like that. But the reason we don't know is because he's not saying anything, and we do have more detail on that. But I figured, uh, Jenga, I figured you'd probably want to jump in. Yeah. So quick thing on McKinsey, then I do want to talk about the press reaction as well because it's very interesting. Um, uh, he he says, Buttigieg says. Uh, he, in fact, I have a quote. He says, it's infuriating to see the choices they have made, especially in the years since I left the firm. Especially, <laughs> yeah. Because before McKinsey was making fantastic choices, <laughs> and, and after Buttigieg left, they're like, oh, he good, the one moral guy is out. Mm -hmm. Let's now go make immoral choices. Well, the Look, I, I, wanna, I wanna be fair and clear, okay? So everybody who works at McKinsey or these consulting companies are not bad guys. Uh, a lot of them are perfectly good folks, and they work on oftentimes perfectly good projects. But sometimes there are projects that are not great, okay? And oftentimes they will say, and it might be justified, it might be unjustified, it might be justified to maximize profits, but not on a moral level. So there's this whole range, right? But sometimes they'll say, come in and they'll pull the bobs and be like, okay, you gotta fire these people. And, and then, and, and their frame of mind is that of executives, and they're hired by the executives. So they don't often tell companies to cut executive salary. Because the executives hired them, right? <laughs> uh, but they will often tell them to fire non-executives and cut salaries, benefits, etc. So for Buttigieg, for some folks to say McKinsey is all bad and everybody who worked there is bad is crazy talk. I don't think that's true. On the other hand, for Buttigieg to go, oh my God, when we were doing when when I, when I was there, we were doing God's work. Okay, <laughs> and, and since I've left, they've become immoral is preposterous. Yeah. So so a couple things we know a little bit about what Buttigieg did there. And we know he spent time in Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan. And what we know about what McKinsey was doing at that time was assisting the uh, you know, Special Inspector General for reconstruction of Iraq and Afghanistan, coming up with ways to build markets in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we kind of know how that turned out. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't exactly great. Has Afghanistan caught China yet? <laughs> I, think, I think they're no? just behind them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the second thing is the reason that Buttigieg gives for not telling you exactly what he did at McKinsey is that he signed a non-disclosure agreement. He signed this NDA. Sorry, guys, I signed an NDA. I'll get sued. I, I can't do that. Do you really think that McKinsey would sue a presidential candidate who broke his NDA? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that be the best thing that Buttigieg ever did in, in, in terms of being a popular, in terms of, of being popular in a presidential race? To, to, break, to stick it to his former employer and say, I'm gonna tell the American people what was going on, what yeah. I did. How bad is what he did that he has to hide behind this NDA? Well, so I wanna say a couple of things about that. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is a Trumpian excuse. Oh, I'm being audited. I'm being audited. Like there's nothing the I can do about it. It's no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's be clear. 
So if you say I'm under an NDA and when I was working for such and such company, I can't tell you their finances and I can't tell you what their problems and issues were and how we address them and I can't tell you salaries and other information, that makes perfect sense. If you say I can't tell you what project I was working on at all, even vaguely. No, right. that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I don't even know that the NDA covers that. The NDA tells you don't give away inside information about the company. And maybe if it does, it shouldn't. And it, this is a policy issue, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. you're you're putting gag orders on people who who move from job to job in a way that 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 you know just does not seem kosher. So yeah. you know, Buttigieg could be taking a stand here on behalf of workers. By saying I'm going to break this, I don't think that uh, I'm I'm you know having any any kind of detrimental impact on McKinsey by telling people what I did. Yeah, and, and, and I'm telling you, I'm not sure that he even has to break it. He he could easily right. tell you the projects he worked on without revealing any private information about those projects. Yeah. So and then secondarily, this is uh, uh, Buttigieg's mo. So uh, they destroyed his campaign finance records. Now in Indiana, that's allowed, and and so that's part of the law. This is another story that Jonathan Larson wrote for TYT Investigates. Mm -hmm. But uh, Buttigieg might have his own campaign finance records that show who his donors are. He refuses to share them. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. <laughs> and so now look, the press has been so soft on him, and I, the Hill article is a pretty good example of that. But what they do is if the press is soft, which is 99% of them, they'll go and they'll give them comments, etc. When you have real journalists like Jonathan Larson, they just ignore them. They go, hey, look, it's not, it's, it's not the New York Times, the New York Times loves me, so I don't have to answer you. If you're not an outlet that, that loves me, I don't have to answer you. That's not a very progressive way of yeah. doing things, it's again, pretty Trumpian. To say, yeah, I don't care. Uh, so, now, uh, yeah, go ahead. Now, now, Warren came out yesterday, and she named Buttigieg by name and said, uh, "I, I think he shouldn't have secret fundraisers. He should let the press into them. He should give the names of the bundlers. He should give the names of the fundraisers." And so you're starting now. You know, the the media they're like a, a pack of children chasing a soccer ball. Now that one has uh, candidate has called the other out by name. Maybe you'll start to see that that rise. Nonetheless, yeah. it's not happening yet. Yeah. So uh, I want to yeah. go to well, the Hill story. But go ahead, John. Sure. Yeah. No, you can get into that. I want to yeah, give yeah. some general commentary about my frustration of the media coverage. Of yeah. Him. So, uh, by the way, Warren is uh, exactly right because remember, Buttigieg was adamantly for Medicare for all in 2018. Then he and uh, then he decides, no, I'm going to do these big bundlers and this these uh, take all this. Uh, Giant donor money, and then conveniently he becomes against Medicare for all. So it's a very fair question to ask: What happened in the meanwhile, right? And who did you talk to in the meanwhile that convinced you to be against this program that you were previously for? So now all these legitimate critiques, also his terrible record with African Americans in South Bend. Again, go to tyt.com/investigates to see all the different issues there, and some of those are ticking time bombs. Because Eric Logan was killed by cops in South Bend, that's coming in in February that trial. And in terms of criminal and civil cases that are proceeding forward, the cops are on tape. John Larson broke this story where they're saying white people are going to be back in charge. Buttigieg's donors are going to get him to fire the police chief, and he does move the police chief out. And those tapes might come out. In the summer, in another trial that's coming, that's another ticking time bomb. And by the way, if Buttigieg is the nominee, too late. Then those bombs explode after he's the nominee. And so those are all interesting. Now, with all this context, The Hill writes a story. And look, there's there's parts of The Hill that, that are great. But in this case, um, this is how they describe the critiques. The first line is, the knives are out for South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Wait. <laughs> Is it a real critique or are people being jerks by knifing poor Pete Buttigieg? Mm -hmm. it's a, he is hiding the McKinsey's uh, uh, records, he is hiding his campaign finance records, he, he is hiding the tapes, his lawyer also has the tapes of when the cops talked about racist things. He's hiding all these things, he's hiding his bundlers, but the knives are out for Pete Buttigieg? Okay, if that was the only one you would say, hey Jake, maybe let's be fair. No, every paragraph, the next paragraph, liberals are Tearing at Buttigieg, viewing him as a threat. <laughs> so wait, 
<laughs> Everyone's been using literal kid gloves. Well, not literal, but kid gloves with him. No, tearing but, at him. But not only that, it's not that it's a critique that I, as a reporter, should look into. It's that liberals are tearing at poor Pete Buttigieg. It's not reporters are, it's, reporters are investigating. It's liberals are being unfair to Buttigieg by bringing up real issues. It's amazing, I'm not even done. That's how political reporters go, right? They, they, they sit uh, atop a mountaintop and say, well, he is fighting with him. And, and, and that's the only way that things get covered. They can't investigate it themselves. Of course, unless it's Bernie Sanders. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard any article, let's go to Weber rule, what if it was Bernie rule, right? <laughs> uh, have you ever heard an article saying, Moderates are tearing at Bernie Sanders, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they just say, oh, Bernie Sanders did this, right? <laughs> and I'm the reporter telling you what a bastard Bernie Sanders is. Okay, so uh, again, look at the framing. Next paragraph, progressives have begun questioning his past consulting work. Why don't you question his past <laughs> consulting work? You're the reporter. But all of it is framed as poor Pete Buttigieg, but it gets worse. They, next paragraph. Democrats say the attacks against Buttigieg are a sign of his strength. <laughs> oh, come on, for God's sake. And if I read you all of it, it would take up the rest of the show. Everything is framed as poor Pete Buttigieg being unfairly attacked by progressives on stuff he's trying to keep hidden as a candidate. Yeah. Well, you know what though? I decided as a reporter, it actually shows how strong he is. Yeah, two reporters on the byline of that. Took two reporters to figure out who was attacking who. Yeah. And it's like of all of the top tier candidates, not even top tier, top tier, middle tier, middle bottom tier, we know the least about him. And yet, he's gotten glowing like front page articles. I just read a GQ piece from last month that said, whether he wins or not, he's gonna be shaping politics for years to come. With what, what policy? So, but here's the thing, <laughs> if you're going to give all of this coverage to him, and you know nothing about him aside from what instruments he plays, what languages he speak, maybe look into his background a little bit. Maybe do a little bit of reporting, maybe put a little bit of substance to the articles that you're writing about him. We know a lot about Joe Biden. We know a lot about Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and others, even others that are polling it way less. If he shoots up into fourth place, he's getting eight, 10% more in some state polls. What are we gonna wait until February, April to find out who he actually is and what he actually believes? Here's a perfect example of that. Uh, uh, and, and it's not about his record, but about his policy ideas. So uh, there's this big fight that's built up around uh, college for all, right? And he says, well, I don't think millionaires and billionaires kids should be able to go to college for free, and this is my story. The truth is, is that his college plan starts phasing out at $100,000 a year of mm -hmm. family income. That's two income family making the median income. That's when it starts phasing out. That's not a millionaire, that's not a billionaire, and but it's all framed from his angle of attack, which is millionaires and billionaires' sons and, and yeah. daughters shouldn't be able to go. Now, you wanna know the real trick to that? The trick is, if it starts phasing out at $100,000, then millionaires and billionaires have to pay less taxes to support free college for everyone. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so that's change on the outside, continuity on the inside. That's why the donors love Buttigieg. And what's really discouraging is the mainstream media. Those these reporters are not wealthy. Okay, I don't know their personal finances, but overall, reporters are not the richest people in the country. No. But groupthink in Washington is so strong that the donor classes co-opted the mainstream media into doing their talking points for them. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.